This tutorial will show you how to create your own fixtures for Magic 3D EasyView. Magic 3D EasyView is a visualizer for DMX. So you can use your DMX output program and actually visualize lighting on a stage setting with this um, on your computer screen. Uh, one note, I noticed some people that were ma uh, downloading Magic 3D EasyView from various sites were having difficulty finding a version that worked. I have uh, in the description below a link to the working version of Magic 3D EasyView. So that would be the one that you want to go to to get the working version. So, Okay, once you've got the software installed and up and running, you'll notice that in the um, menu selection, besides the main program, you also have a secondary program called Scan Library Editor. That's the one that you want to start up to be able to edit and create your own fixture. And that's what I have showing here. So once this program starts up and, and is running, um, we'll just take a look at, kind of orient ourselves to the interface here. It'll start up and probably look something like this. So it's kind of a blank slate so that you can get started and, in, and design your own fixture. It'll show the fixtures that you have opened and creating or currently editing up here as tabs. Um, new, open a fixture from here. You can go and open any of the fixtures that are currently created and open them and edit them and save them in a different way if you'd like to. So that's a possibility too. And then your save button of course is up here. Uh, if you click on the light here, it comes up with a general menu where you fill in general information about the light, but such as uh, what kind of fixture is it? Is a uh, head? And it'll give you some different looking heads. Most of these are moving heads that you can select here. Doesn't have to be exact to your particular light. The dimensions of the particular light as far as the width and height and then depth. You'll notice that you can fill in the weight. It's not exactly important if you want to fill in the weight at all. Uh, light beam, that would be important if you have a type of fixture that has one more than one head in it or more than one light beam to it. Uh, other information such as manufacturer ID, fixture name, that kind of thing, power writing, uh, rating, those are all kind of optional if you want to fill them in, it's helpful. Uh, beam angle down here would be very important because this is going to decide the way that the beam is displayed in Magic 3D Easy View. So a 16 degree beam would be a, a narrower beam, smaller pool of light, and um, a 60 degree beam would be a lot bigger. And you also get to choose here whether you want spot or wash. The difference in the visualizer program is the spot would give you a hard edged circle of light or hard edged pattern where the wash is going to give you a soft edged pattern to that. Pan angle, this is going to be important too. You have to look at the information for the light that you're creating this for and how far can the light turn. Can it turn 360 degrees in pan? And then where is the center of position going to be for that 127? Um, and that's 127 in respect to your DMX. So DMX uh, information runs from 0 to 255. 127 is approximately right in the middle. So they're saying that this would be the middle pan position. In this particular, they're starting out here with tilt angle being 220. Again, you have to look at the information for your light and decide uh, what the manufacturer says the total tilt angle can be. And again, usually halfway through that tilt angle, uh, 127 doesn't mean 127 out of 220. This channel is still going to be running 0 to 255, so 127 refers to the DMX value that's going to put the light in the center of that tilt angle. It's the DMX value, okay? Um, as far as pan speed and tilt speed, I don't think you really need to do anything about that. If you uh, want to invert this, if you find when you are place this on your stage, you're looking at the visualizer and it's not quite correct, you can uh, click invert and that will switch depending upon which way you have your light mounted in the visualizer program. So that invert would switch that around and invert that so the light could go a different way. There's different types of fixtures up here um, and when you're under fixtures you have heads such as moving heads, you have scan such as uh, scan with the mirrors, you have conventional which is a color changer or par lamps. You have LEDs, which are like LED bars or LED sticks. You have a roller, which is kind of like a mirror scanner, but with a roller instead. 
and then uh, multi beam which is kind of the same thing it'll do like a prism effect uh, you can do colored objects uh, panels here like LED panels also uh, you can do lasers and you can do other if you want such as fog machine and those kind of effects that you have to do there so all right that pretty much covers this once I say okay and I'm working on this when I go to save here it will ask me what folder do I want to put this in I can go back to my main folder the scan library folder here and here you have all the names of the different manufacturers so if you want to you can create a, a new folder here uh, create new folder under scan library with the name of your manufacturer or you can just simply put your light under the generic uh, setting there but just so that you know where you have it saved so you can pull it up when you're working with your visualizer program over here you're going to be dropping in your different channels of information so depending upon what the light has and we'll just show you an example here I'll bring up the American DJ uh, dots so uh, with this particular light you have different modes so in mode one this American DJ light and let me just take a look and show you what this is so that's the American DJ dot so it's basically an RGB light but it has nine different selectable lights that you can use in this so in mode one the entire light just works as a red green blue RGB in mode two uh, we have red green blue but we also have a dimmer function a shutter function and a dimmer curve dimmer curve in this respect being that you can do different curves if it's being used for television a production studio you might want a different different dimmer curve uh, theater if it's used as a DJ effect you have different presets that you can pull out in there mode 3 goes to 8 channels and some more things that you can uh, do with it, the light mode 4 and now we're all the way up to using each light individually so there's a red green and blue channel for each light and then mode 5 would be uh, individual lights plus some other controls such as color macro uh, program speed dimmer shutter and dimmer curve so a lot of different options there uh, but you get the idea what you will be doing is taking the channel information here and dropping it over here it's kind of a visual program what you use what you get so we'll take channel information and drop it over here and then we will go into the channel information and add more information such as the dimmer curve here you can see that I have six presets if I click on the presets then I have uh, different ranges that are available to me that I can uh, access and this way rather than just doing it a generic uh, 0 through 255 I can be more specific here as far as what the presets are and what's happening in here with that and if we go up to some of the other um, higher modes like uh, program color macros there's 31 presets and color macros we can go through and add all of these presets these presets are going to be added from this menu here and we'll show you how we do that so I've created all these presets for this different light and again so this allows the visualizer program to know when we send it a certain DMX value it allows it to know okay should by I be projecting a red light or a blue light or a red and green combination light gives you the opportunity to do that what's well, important to know about this dots brick one when we're doing it when I go to the main light you'll notice over here that it is nine light beams so if when you do this in the visualizer if you need to have more than one light beam coming out of this light this is where you're going to click on the light beams and you can use the slider or type in the number of light beams and you can actually arrange it and I noticed in this case here they actually have these uh, arranged incorrectly and you can move these around and drag them it should be more like this one two three four five six and then seven eight and nine so our panel should probably look something a little bit more like that as far as the way the light beams are, are arranged and again that's just going to be determined when the visualizer shows this light what it's going to actually look like on your uh, simulated stage so let's take a look at another light here that's a little bit different and then I will actually get to showing you how to do a program we'll take a light that 
uh, say we purchased uh, from online that's uh, relatively simple and expensive and show you how we go through programming that so that uh, it can be used in uh, Magic 3D Easy View. Let's take a look at the Xiaomi R uh, Rogue One Spot and you can see that this one only has two modes and when I'm in mode one by the one it will show me up here number of input channels is 19. If I'm in mode two uh, I'm input channels is 16 so there's a slight difference there of about three channels. Notice that I have pan, micro pan, tilt, micro tilt. Then we go to pan tilt speed. We go to dimmer. We go to micro dimmer. So they have an uh, extra channel there, micro dimmer. We have a shutter speed. Notice that there's six presets here. And here's a good e explanation. Uh, the shutter on this lamp is closed from DMX values 0 through 3. Then DMX 4 through 7, it's open. It starts uh, strobing uh, DMX values 8 through 76, uh, pulsing 77 through 145, random strobe 146 through 215, and then shutter open 216 to 235. So you can see these values are not they're not the same. Like this is only three DMX uh, channel value. This is four through seven, so that's about another three. And then 8 through 76, here we're talking about 68 uh, different values in here. And we'll show you how to set them differently and how that can be done. Um, in this case, this is a color wheel. So I have two 12 presets for the color wheel here that are set up. These are probably similar, but again, not quite. It says uh, here that uh, open is 0 through 6, and then red is 7 through 13. You're going to get all of this information from your light manual to figure out what these values should be down here. Uh, but the color um, channel itself is taken from over here and then dropped in. Uh, Gobo Will has 12 presets. When we do Gobos, there's a large selection here. And you can choose them. Hopefully one of them will match your light. If not, if you really try want to be artistic, you can actually go and draw your own gobo design up there if you'd like to do that. But again, we've got to set up the presets for that. Uh, gobo rotation for presets uh, for that. Uh, a secondary gobo wheel in this light. And then another setting for gobo wheel that's in there. A focus setting that allows us to focus. A prism setting where, again, 0 to 4 is no function. And then uh, prism insert is 5 through 255. Prism rotation. Rotation index. So you can see how these are all. And these are, values are all going to come from your manual. Your iris. Four settings for the iris. Macro. 32 different macro settings. And we can, in this case, they just lab labeled the macro 1 through uh, 31, no function being the first one. Hopefully your manual will tell you what each one of those macro functions is going to do. Macro speed controlled over here. And then finally you have a control channel, which would use the question mark. If your channel doesn't fit any of these various information, you then you would just simply go to a control channel over here and you can input and describe what these different things are. These are usually light specific where it's doing something with that particular light like lamp on, lamp off, or it could be some kind of resetting the light or various things that the manufacturer might have the uh, light doing. Uh, this one looks like blackout during uh, move, uh, blackout white during move, Disable pan tilt, disable color change. So there's a whole bunch of manufacturer settings. This is more of a high-end light, be a lot more expensive. So there are a lot more settings available with that. Okay, with that said, uh, it's always a good idea if you are designing something and you get a little bit confused about how exactly to set up your light, remember that you can load up any of the lights that are already installed. You might be able to find something that's similar to your light and take a look at how they've done this and described the light. 